All right, guys, welcome to Math 0106. This is part two of solving percent problems and applications. Uh, this is lesson 22. Uh, what we're going to be doing here is uh, last time I had to abruptly stop, I was losing track of time and I ran out of time. And we, we ended up figuring out that 458 divided by 46, we were doing this part right here that that gives me 9.9. .9. So if we look here, we now have 9.9 .9 times 100. So because we're multiplying by 100, that means I'm gonna take this decimal place, and move it over two spots. So this is now 990. So the question is down here, what is what percent of 46 is 458? Uh, it's 990% of um, 46. Um, that should make sense because obviously 46 is significantly less than 458. So um, let's move on to the next question. So question number 12 says at one point in 2004, a quarterback had completed 46.3% of his passes throughout his career. He had attempted uh, 2,206 passes. How many did he complete? So this is basically saying if he's done... If he's attempted uh, 2206 and he's makes 46.3% of his passes, what, what is the answer? So we know of means multiply. So we're just going to do 40, 46.3% is out of 100 times 2206. And we're just going to solve that. So again, I think the we could divide if we wanted to. We know 100 and, and 2206 are go into each other, but um, since it's out of 100, it's easy to play with 100 at the end. So let's just do 2,206 and multiply that by 46.3. So if we do that, 6 times 3 is 18, carry the 1. 0 times 3 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 2 is still 6. Go to the next line, we're going to put a zero here. Six times six is 36, so I know this is a three. Six times zero is zero, plus three is three. Two times six is 12, carry the one. Two times six is 12, plus one is 13. We're going to go to the next line, two zeros. Six times four is 24. This now is a two. Four times zero is zero, plus two is two. Four times two is eight. 4 times 2 is still 8. We're going to add this up. So let's see what we end up getting when we add these. So 8 plus 0 plus 0 is 8. 1 plus 6 is 7. 6 plus 3 is 9. Plus 4 is 13. Carry the 1. 7 plus 2. Uh, sorry, 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. This is going to become 12. And this is 10. So because we have one decimal place here, we have to move one forward, and the number is going to be, let's see here, it's 102,137.8. And that is, let's see if that makes sense. So if you're multiplying, think of this as 20 times 50. So that would get you 20 times five is 100. And so with the zero is allotted, it, it does make sense. So it's going to be a little bit more because it's 2206. Or really, I don't really know that, but I just know it's going to be pretty close to 100,000. So that that looks good. Um, now, remember, we we just did the numerator, right? We're still taking all of this. Let me rewrite the number. We're dividing it by 100. So remember, when you divide, you make a number smaller. So that makes sense to move the decimal place two slots over. So now this is 121, I'm sorry, 1021.378. And this is the answer. So how many did he complete? He completed 1,021. Probably they mean here in this case, we would round down. So 1,021. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Number 13. And 13 is one that you're likely to see on an exam. Last year, Maria earned 
$323 per week. This year, her salary increased to $345 per week. What is the percent increase? Okay, so she made... So there are a couple of ways of looking at this. My suggestion... Well, let me just do this. I think the easiest way is to know this formula right here. New value minus original value divided by original value is equal to plus or minus percent change. So we know the new value is 345. The original value is 323. And we're going to calculate the percent change. So 45 minus 23 is going to give me 22. So we're at 22 over 323. So this is going to give me the percent increase. I put plus or minus here. In your cases, it will always be plus. But I put plus or minus because if, if it's going to come out as a uh, negative, these numbers would actually be flipped. So a little bit beyond the uh, scope of this course, but if the numbers are flipped, uh, when you subtract, you would be getting a negative value because you have, you have less value. Um, but we won't see that in this course. They'll always be positive, so you actually will always have a percent increase. So the next bit is, well, then what is the percent increase? So how do we how do we deal with this? Well, here we're going to divide 22 into 320, or rather 323 into 22. So this is going to be an exercise of putting multiple decimals. I need two because I can't put 323 into 220. So I have to put 323 into 2200. And so now we're going to go off to the side here. I'm going to do it right here. And I'm just going to keep adding 323. And remember, what I'm looking to do is I'm trying to get to 2200. So as I keep adding, I'm just going to try to get to 2200. Got to keep adding. So 5 and 3 is 8, 3 and 2 is 5, 6 and 3 is 9. Almost there. Which is good because I think I've run out of space. So this is 2281. Let's see here. Yeah, I went over. I've gone over. Okay. So we have how many times? So this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. This is four, five, six, seven. Okay, so at seven we go bust, so it's gonna work six times. Six times 323 is 1958. And then we're gonna subtract. So this becomes 10 bar from here is nine, bar from here is 11, bar from here is one. So this is gonna leave me two, four, two. Again, this is not enough, so you have to put another zero. So we're going 323 into, how many times is 323 going to the 24, uh, 2420? So I'm at 2281. I have to continue. I can't scroll anymore, so I'm actually going to go sideways. 323. So 1 and 3 is 4. 2 and 8 is 10. Carry the 1. 2 and 3 is 5 plus 1 is 6. So this is 2604. Um what did I want? 24. So it's just one more. Okay, so this is going to be 7. So now we're at 7. Let me do this in a different color. So now we're at 7. So 7 times 323 is going to be 2281. Then we're going to subtract. Uh, this one's going to be 10, this is going to become 11, this is going to become 3, so this is 9, 3, 1. And again, I'd encourage you to add 139 to 2281 and see that you get back to 2420. So I'm kind of, obviously, at this point, I'm just kind of running through the, the process as if you've mastered it. But if you have not mastered it, um, right, use these techniques and 
I'm doing a lot of this in my head automatically, but you should always be adding numbers back, right? You should always be adding these numbers to see that they go back. Because um, one little mistake in the whole thing gets thrown off. In any case, uh, if I'm going to continue this process, I have to put in another zero and drop it down. And I have 1390, and we know 1390 is going to be here at 1312, so 4. And I could keep, we could keep going. I think that this is sufficient. So what is the increase? I made a mistake here, by the way. I really should have, this is point zero six because I started, I started here. I was wondering why my decimal allotment was off. So I did make a silly mistake. Um, there should have been a zero in front. So it's point zero six seven four. Uh, the, because I started over over on this slot. Um, by the way, I knew that that made sense because when I'm looking at my number here, 22 is what percent of 22? How much of 22 is of 323? There's no way that would have been 67% of it, right? So I know I had been made a mistake. By the way, I kind of alluded to what you have to do next, which we're not actually done here, right? You would have to multiply this by 100 to convert. Um, notice that when I said 100, I just wrote 100 because we know that that is just moving two slots over. So this is 6.74%. So it's roughly 6.74% increase. Um, if I needed to write more, I would. Uh, but there is the answer. Okay, moving on to the next one. So one thing that I do want to stress is that on your test and on the final day, typically, typically, I've not actually seen your final, but typically, uh, the exam problems are not such that the questions are as ugly as what we're seeing here. But if you can handle these ugly problems, then you can handle the problems on the final. Okay, let's look at number 14. The sales tax rate in Houston is 8.255%. How much tax will be charged on a purchase of three chairs at $61 a piece? Round your answer to the nearest cents. Okay, so again here, I'm actually not going to concern myself with the arithmetic. Um, I'm just going to concern myself with the setup. The, what they're doing here is you purchase three chairs at $61 a piece. So we would do 61 times 3 which means I'm going to spend $183 on these chairs. We're going to increase this. We're going to have a sales tax rate of 8.255%. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to multiply by 1.08255. And I hope that you guys can tell me why that is the case. And the reason why I'm multiplying by 1.08255 is first off 8.255 percent is out of 100, so it means I move the decimal place over 2. So this 0.08255 is the decimal equivalent of the percent. And then I added 1 because it's 100%. So this goes back to if you bought something with an at 8% tax, well, the, the item is originally is 100% of the value plus 8% of the value, which would give me 108% of the value. So I just have to solve this, and that would give me the answer. And this comes out to be 198.10665. Again, I'm not going to concern myself with the arithmetic. You honestly are not going to have to do problems of that degree on an exam, so don't stress over that. Concern yourself more with the process. Um, in conclusion, how would I finish this off? Well, it says round to the nearest cent. So if cents are two decimal places, so this would be rounded to 198.11. And as an aside, uh, one thing that we, we do see with, with this is, is it's kind of interesting, is that computer programs tend to round accordingly, and some programs round and some don't. Some round up always, some round down always, and this is something that people don't realize. So... Um, if I was if I was running a business and my motivation in my business is profits, I'm always going to take something with a decimal and round it up. And the reason why I would always round up instead of rounding down um, is because if I'm making, even though it's just a cent more increase to the consumer, there's a little concern about that. People don't worry about paying a penny more. But if we are running multiple transactions throughout a day and I'm always rounding up, 
if there's no law saying that I have to round down, I don't know, I don't know what the law is on this, then one cent accumulated over and over and over again throughout a day, let's say you, you have 500 purchases, right? That, that adds up over time. And so, so you, you actually end up making a significant amount of money over the course of years. So this is, this is actually what a lot of businesses look at in terms of how to, how do you maximize profits and things like that. Um, any case, it's, it's kind of an interesting idea, uh, exercise. You would be surprised, and I'm probably going to stop talking about this in a, in a sec here, but you would be surprised, uh, if you, if you actually calculated the sales tax of, of an item and saw whether they were charging a cent more or a cent less, um, you'd be amazed at actually how, how many places actually round up or don't round or round down and actually even within the same stores, so like you go to, let's say, a McDonald's or a Chick-fil-A in one location, and then you go to one in the other, they actually have a different computer program for it. Um, yes, this is things that I think about when I'm purchasing food that's not healthy for me. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so let's look at number 15, find the missing value. So we have the marked price is 157 it is discounted 10%. So if I wanted to find the discount, I would do 157 times 0.1. We know that that's just moving the decimal place over. So this is 15.7. So the sale price would be 157 minus 15.7, which is going to be, let's, let's do that. 157 minus 15.7. I'd have to include a point zero here. And so when I subtract, this is 10, this is six, so this is three, one. So I would be spending $141.30. So this would be the total price, $141.30 with a discount of 15.7. Now you could actually, attack this problem this way, you could say if you have 100% of the value and it's a 10% discount, you are left with 90% of the value. So if you multiplied 157 by 0.9, you actually still get 141.3. And let's actually do it to illustrate that that is the case. So if I did 157 times 0.9, 63, Five, four, 5 times 9 is 45, 45 plus 6 is 51, that's 40, we have one decimal place, so one decimal place. And you see you get the same value. So uh, different ways of thinking about it, you could calculate how much the discount is first, which is what happened here, right? Um, and then you could use that to find the sale price, or you could attack it directly by just saying, hey, I have 90% of the value. Um, so different ways of thinking uh, about these sorts of questions. Let's move on to the next one. So in number 16, the Dow Jones Industrial Average plunged from 11,143 to 10,365 on September 29, 2009. This is the largest one-day drop in history. What was the percent decrease? Okay, so we discussed earlier a formula. I said new value minus original value divided by original value is equal to percent change. And so, ooh, this should not be in this course. Let's talk about this. You're not gonna have to do this on a test though, just FYI. So this is gonna be 10,365 minus 11,143 over 11,143. Okay, so what happens here is because we're going to 10,365, 10,365, that 10,365 is my new value, whereas 11,143 is my original value. Now, the reason why you're not going to see this is because this would be giving me a negative number. But if we were to do this, we would get negative 778 over 11,143. Uh, if you divided this out, again, I'm not concerned with what these numbers are. Uh, I'm more concerned with that you would know how to set it up you would end up getting negative 0 0.0698. So if I jump the decimal place two slots over, this would be negative 
percent. So you lost, so it dropped almost seven percent. Uh, again, don't work, don't concern yourself with the long division, that's not necessary. Let's move on to number 17. All right, 17 says a kitchen table costs $230, the sales tax is $6.90. What is the tax rate and what is the total price paid? Okay, so you paid $230. Well, hold on a second. It says the kitchen table costs $230. The, the sales tax, so we're multiplying by some percent rate and that's gonna give me 690 as the sales tax. And it says, what is the total price? Okay, I wanna make sure that I'm reading the question correctly. All right, so here, I have to do a little bit of algebra here. I'm gonna to have to divide by 230. Okay, this is going to give me percent equals the 6.9 over 230. Again, I'm not gonna concern myself with the arithmetic here. Um, what I'm concerned with is the setup. Um, also note that I am doing a little bit of algebra, which you will get exposed to more in future classes. This actually breaks down to 0.03, it actually comes out clean. Um, so that's interesting. Um, so what do we do from here? Okay, so, sorry, let's take a look at this for a second. Hold on, 6.9 over 230. This should actually be pretty easy to do if it's coming out pretty. So hold on a second. So if we divide this, if we factor out a three here, you, you see how we get, we end up getting 23 here or 2.3. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me make this, let me show you what I would do. I don't like decimals. So I would actually multiply top and bottom by 10. I'm not changing the problem. So this would give me 69 over 2300. Oops. Then I'm going to factor out a 23. This is a 23 times 3. So that's a lot cleaner. And this is 23 times 100. The 23s will divide out, and 3 over 100 is 0.03. So that actually was pretty easy to do. I wasn't thinking about it, but it was actually pretty easy. So there's a 3% gain. And then the second part of the question says, what is the total price paid? Let me do this actually a different color. What is the total price paid? Well, um, we you paid 230 plus 6.9. This is easy enough to add together. Gives me 23. Sorry, I'm running over the other problems. Uh, $236.90. Um, and there you have it. So... Uh, the, it goes to show you that I'm looking at a question and I even I'm not thinking about how complicated the, the how simple it is even though it looks complicated so uh, keep that in mind um, uh, you don't to be honest with you, you don't see too many questions like this on say final exams or my tests so keep that in mind you do see this in future classes though all the time so knowing this is very important in the grand scheme of things let's move on we're looking at number 18 now, 45 and 1 fifth. Now, I remember, I know 45 and 1 fifth is actually, 1 fifth is just 0.2. So this is 45.2% of 92 is what? So we know word for word, 45.2 is 45.2 out of 100 of means to multiply 92 is 92, is is equal, what is x? And we just solved this. So again, because we're out of 100, I'm going to go ahead and just multiply 45.2 times 92. This is going to be 4. This is 10 carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 0, this is 18. 9 times 5 is 45, plus 1 is 46. So this is now 4. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 4 is 40. Um, this is 4, 8, 15, carry the 1. So this is 41, 5, 8, 4. Because we have a decimal here, this means that we have to move it over 1. So this is going to give me 4,158.40. Um, and remember, we're still dividing by 100, right? 
So I still have over 100, which means I still got to move the decimal place two places over. So this is 41.584. And that is my final answer. All right, on to the next one. So the next one we have is 21 is, is it means equal, 6%, so 6 out of 100 of what? So again, you see what I'm doing here. I just, when I read and I see, I glance at the question, I saw is, of, what? I know, I just read it word for word and translate it into math. Um, we also know that when we see have situations like this, we multiply by the reciprocal. To get rid of the, to get isolate X. This right here is, we can clean this up quite easily. We know 21 and 6 are both divisible by 3, so 6 divided by 3 is 2. 21 divided by 3 is 7. I can even do this. 2 goes into 100. Leave me with 100 divided by 2 is 50. So to finish this off, we have 50 times 7, which is 350. And that's it. This is definitely something that you could see on a test or on a, on a final, by the way. Let's move on. Number 20, if a flagpole 12 feet tall, so here's my, here's my flagpole, it's 12 feet tall, cast a shadow that is 16 feet long, find the length of the shadow cast by an antenna that is 30, so here we have an antenna that is 30 feet tall. Note this is drawn, this is not drawn to scale. That's kind of close. Eh, yeah, 15 is half, so yeah, kind of close. Sorry. So what do we do here? Well, um, what we have here, so this is one way of looking at this. Another way of looking at this is that you have two situations. You have the antenna. This is 30, I'm just drawing as a triangle. We're looking for this. Then we have the flag. This is 16 and this is 12. Okay, so situation as such. We know when we have these situations, this is just a fancy way of saying proportions. So we have 30 to X is 12 to 16. And I hope in the back of your mind, you're yelling at me because I didn't write height I guess to shadow or horizontal. I don't. I don't know how you want to describe it, but you want to keep. You want to write your dimensions off to the side so you don't make a silly mistake. I kind of had a picture drawn, so it makes it a little easier to do. Uh, when we're attacking proportions, remember what we said. This is a nice little review question. Uh, when we attack proportions, we if we don't see directly twelve times what is thirty, then let's reduce. So both twelve and 16 are divisible by four. Maybe that makes it a little easier. This is three and this is four. So, ah, look at that. 30, well, actually we're going the other way. 10 times three is 30. So this is just times four. I'm sorry, times 10, which is 40. So X is 40. And there's your answer. So it's as easy as that. Is is So very, very, very important. This is a skill you're going to need um, to make your life way easier. Um, reduce. And if you reduce, a lot of times you can see what you need to multiply by to get to the other side. You, of course, can always cross multiply and divide, and that'll work as well. But this is it. This was the last problem on this page. So um, ho hopefully this makes sense, guys. And I will see you all in the next math video. Again, always feel free to comment and post, uh, email me some questions if you have issues. All right, guys, see you in the next video.